You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the gun, the drugs, the magic. Here we are then, the final relive in the war of 1998. It's the 28th of December and tonight Raw comes live from Albany, New York while Nitro takes place in Baltimore, Maryland. It's going to be an interesting show this week for sure. We're 24 hours removed from Starcade 98 and we have a new world champion on Nitro. The WCW show opens up with footage from last night where we see Eric Bischoff celebrating with his black and white teammates inside a limousine. While over on the USA Network, we learn that Vince McMahon's going to fire Shawn Michaels tonight on Raw. More on that later though. We have an AEW All In Jam Up Guys special this week. First, here's Tim and Dennis representing Reliving the War inside Wembley Stadium. Those boys stole the show just like Freddie Mercury did back in Live Aid in 85. Thanks very much lads and I hope you had a great time at All In. And check this out, remember German broadversts Freddie and Mikhail? They were Jam Up Guys back in January and they're back. They are two time Jam Up Guys and they not only attended All In but they're also expecting their second little Jam Master in a few months time. Our boy knows a thing or two about conducting serious horseman business. Congratulations guys, and I'll be terribly disappointed if that kid's not named Alex or Steve Blackman. Let's get the show started with our number one of Monday Nitro. The commentators talk about what happened at Starcade. Bischoff defeated Flair and Nash ended Goldberg's undefeated streak. Larry Sabisco remains hopeful though and he says 1999 will be WCW's year. I bet it isn't Larry, I bet it isn't. Ernest Miller wants to whoop someone tonight and Chris Jericho went through the trouble of finding Ernest an opponent. It's Shima Nobunaga, or as Jericho likes to call him. And Shima Ramalama Ding Dong, we know that you have what it takes. Jericho put Shima over, saying he's a karate machine trained by Ultimo Dragon, and Chris promises that both he and Rolfus will watch Shima's back during this match. Unfortunately, the cat was on form tonight and Shima only lasted a minute or so. Cat kicked his opponent in the corner, he hit Shima with a power slam, and the feliner was enough to give Ernest the win while Chris Jericho laughed at the entranceway. Poor Shima Ramalama Ding Dong didn't stand a chance. Norman Smiley may have the moves, but Chavo Guerrero has the pythons, brother. Chavo's feeling confident tonight, but Mr. Smiley's been on quite the win streak recently. The Baltimore crowd loves the Norman shuffle, but things get a bit shaky when Smiley takes a rough fall out of the ring. That didn't look too pleasant, did it? Chavito buys Norman some time by riding Pepe around the ring, and the match resumes with a beautiful head scissor takedown by Guerrero Jr. Smiley counters the Tornado DDT with a back suplex, and he treats the fans to the big wiggle. He then pulls off the Smiley slam and he shoots his arrow into the air while flexing his own pythons, brother. Hulk Hogan better watch out. A chin lock from your new favorite wrestler gets answered with a sunset flip attempt and <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's one of those things that could get overdone but somehow it never gets owned. Case in point, after Chavo gets put on the mat, Norman locks eyes on Pepe and Pepe has a great time when Norman wiggles on Chavito's pet horse. This act infuriates Chavo though and Guerrero fires up on Smiley big time but Chavo's caught the bug too and he too gives us a wiggle. Tony Schiavone calls this the little wiggle. Norman brings Pepe back into the ring again and he asks the stallion, who's your daddy? Chavo's, <laughs> Chavo's able to take advantage again but he ends up getting distracted while talking to Pepe and Smiley takes advantage with the Norman conquest. Norman wins via submission in a match that was way more entertaining than it had any right to be. It was really silly but it was really fun to watch. 
Mummy Raven has allowed WCW to film the homecoming of her baby boy, and some fans will remember all this quite fondly. It goes on for weeks. Canyon, Raven, and Raven's mom pull up to the Raven household in Florida, and Mummy Raven thinks her son should remove his jacket. Raven says, no, I like my jacket. Inside the house, Mummy Raven says she'll get Scott a nice ham sandwich and some chocolate milk, but Raven wants a proper drink. Canyon refuses, so Raven settles on a club soda before complaining that the TV doesn't work. Looks like everything Canyon said was true, Raven really is a spoilt rich kid. Our number one wraps up with Booker T vs Fit Finlay. The commentators didn't care much about the match as they continued to talk about Ric Flair vs Eric Bischoff from Starcade. This one had a lot of back and forth with Finlay giving as good as he gets but he made the big mistake of going to the top rope. Booker slams him down before hitting the Hardham sidekick and Booker T wins another one with his trademark missile dropkick. On Sunday Night Heat, we learned that Mr. McMahon saved Kane from getting institutionalized. This explains why Kane's now part of the corporation. McMahon made Kane thank him in the middle of the ring, and it's clear the big red machine's gonna be Vince's new instrument of destruction. McMahon says everyone who hurt Shane last week's gonna get payback tonight on Raw. Commissioner Michaels is gonna get fired as soon as he enters the building. And seeing as Kane already took care of X-Pac last night on Heat, the corporation are gonna target Mankind right at the beginning of the show. Mankind gets beaten up inside the boiler room, McMahon calls Foley a freak, and Vince says Mankind's gonna get exactly what he wants tonight, a shot at the hardcore title. Shane then informs Vince that HBK already booked Road Dog vs Val Venus for the hardcore belt, and Vince says, well, we'll see about that. That Road Dog vs Venus match opens up the in-ring action on Raw this week while Ric Flair cuts a promo on Nitro. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Shut up! This opening hardcore match on Raw is the least hardcore match you've ever seen in your life. Not only did the competitors fight fair, more or less, and there were no weapons involved, but after just two minutes of standard action, Tess comes to the ring and he attacks Val Venus. The referee then calls for a DQ in a hardcore match, what the hell? Even the commentators wonder what Art Hebner's doing here. The corporation attack Venus on the outside. DX then hit the ring and they quickly remember that Val Venus isn't a fellow degenerate so they just kinda let the corporation carry on. But then, Mr. McMahon appears with a microphone to straighten this mess out. McMahon says the match is officially over but Road Dogg shouldn't worry, Jesse James is gonna defend his belt again later on and it's gonna be against Mankind. McMahon says DX are gonna pay, nobody touches my son Shane and nobody laughs at my son Shane. Vince then explains why he's firing Shawn Michaels. HBK held the corporation back while Shane took a beating last week, so Vince promises that Shawn will be humiliated in the middle of the ring tonight on Raw. Here's DX's matches for tonight. Along with Road Dogg vs Mankind, we've got Bossman vs X-Pac, Billy Gunn vs The Godfather, and Triple H vs Ken Shamrock. On Nitro, Ric Flair comes to the ring carrying his bags. He says he thought he was done, he was gonna go home and get ready to retire, but when he sat on the plane, he decided he needed to go to Baltimore instead to address Eric Bischoff. Rick completely loses it again. To prove he isn't broke, he takes off his clothes and he says his threads are all Armani, Perry Ellis and Hugo Boss. He takes his suit out of his bag to flex on Eric Bischoff and oh no, Rick's $2000 alligator belt comes off next along with his Rolex. Rick's saying that all these things can be Eric Bischoff's but we don't know exactly what he's getting at here. Rick starts ripping up $100 bills before taking off his Gucci shoes and fuck me, someone in the audience got a nice settlement out of that one I'm sure. The pants then come off, Flair elbow drops John Cena and Rick says he'll sign everything he owns over to Eric and he'll leave wrestling forever if Bischoff steps into the ring with him one more time. There is a catch though, if Rick wins he'll be allowed to run WCW for 90 days, an oddly specific stipulation right there but okay. And Rick says the first thing he'll do while in charge of WCW is take Bischoff's head out of Hulk Hogan's ass, a difficult task but a doable task I'm sure. The Nature Boy handcuffs himself to the ring ropes, he says he's not leaving until he gets an answer, and if Bischoff doesn't show up then Rick's gonna get naked on TNT. Please Eric, please show up. 
After a commercial break, Eric comes to the ring and Bischoff says this has been all great so far but nothing would be better than taking everything away from Slick Rick. Rick gets a little heated, Bischoff tells Flair to calm down or he'll have a heart attack and Rick says when he dies of a heart attack it'll be on Easy es girlfriend, Nage is on top form tonight. Eric agrees to the match, if Flair wants another beating then so be it. The horsemen aren't here apparently so Eric thinks this'll be another easy victory just like last night. Flair meanwhile says Eric's a dead man and this is gonna be our Nitro main event tonight guys. Rick was so entertaining here, I know he wasn't happy in WCW and all this leads to more nonsense down the road but this promo right here was great. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello, Smokey, my cat. Al Snow vs Edge on Raw, Prince IK vs Barry Windham on Nitro. The Raw bout has a little story going into it, what with the bloodbath last week, whereas the Nitro match is your typical Nitro throwaway match that no one's gonna care about unfortunately. Al Snow clearly hasn't washed in a week, he chokes Edge up against the apron, he challenges Edge to hit him as hard as he can before delivering a hook clothesline, Snow then goes upstairs and he lands a moonsault but he doesn't go for a cover. It looks like Head's seen better days as Al grabs a steel chair but his second moonsault attempt gets stopped with an electric chair drop from Edge, an electric chair drop. Edge misses a top rope elbow and Snow loses it and he delivers a ton of headbutts before grabbing Head and the match ends in disqualification when Edge gets smacked, that's 2 for 2 on Raw ladies and gents. The Brood come out, the Job Squad come out and we have a big old fight that ends with Al escaping through the audience. Backstage, Patterson and Briscoe make fun of Kane behind the big red machine's back as Mr McMahon delivers some orders. McMahon wants the head of a DX member on his mantle back at home and Vince berates Kane while making sure Kane understands his mission tonight. Dennis Knight is backstage at Raw, X-Pac wonders why Dennis showed up tonight and Dennis said that he told him to be here. Who is he? Who knows? On Nitro, uh, Ikea and Wyndham wrestle in front of a pretty silent audience. You can hear faint Goldberg chants during this one and again the commentators show zero interest in the match. The discussion's now all about tonight's main event and Ric Flair's health going into this match against Bischoff. Wyndham destroys Ikea, the only offense the prince got in was this dropkick right here. Wyndham clawed at Ikea's face before biting him in the head, he threw the prince out of the ring to embarrass him a little more and the match ends with a bulldog from Bischoff. Big Barry. Exciting it was not. Next up, Sable defends the women's championship against a uh, spider lady. On Nitro, some rando gives us the lowdown on kettle prods and how dangerous they are. I'm not even joking. That fan we saw months ago jumps into the ring to give Sable a yellow rose. She's clearly a big supporter of Sable and everything Sable does. Big Jim Dotson, WWF's director of security and a man who makes Doug Dillinger shit his pants every time he turns on Raw, escorts the lady out of the ring. Here comes Spider Lady, 10 out of 10 for the ring gear. And guess what? The match doesn't even get started. That's two DQs and a non-starter on Raw. Spider Lady viciously attacks Sable and she even whips Sable with her patented spider belt. The oddities come down along with George Steele, George joined the oddities on heat by the way, and wow it's Luna Vachon, like a blind porn star I didn't see it coming. The oddities try to work out what's going on here but Luna leaves the ring saying it's about me and what I deserve. So it appears that Luna's back to being a heel, thank god. This boy then over on Nitro is Tom Atchison, WCW security extraordinaire and another guy who cries into his pillow when he takes a look at Big Jim Dotson. Mean Gene wants to know more about this weapon that took Goldberg out last night and Tom says this cattle prod was confiscated from Scott Hall after the main event. Mean Gene wants to know what a cattle prod's used for, uh, it's used for prodding cattle Mean Gene. But Tombo says that law enforcement also used them for a brief time too. A cattle prod causes a human being to have motor dysfunction, it shuts down your muscles and it can cause a short circuit to the entire nervous system. Mean Gene wants to know Tom's professional take on the Goldberg match last night. Did that cattle prod cause Goldberg to lose the world title? And what do you think Tom said? Of course he thinks Goldberg lost the belt because of the cattle prod. He was 
hardly going to say no after putting the thing over so much. For folks who don't spend their time prodding cattle and zapping criminals, this was some very insightful television. Time to feel the bang, it's a DDP promo on Nitro, on Raw, X-Pac serves hard time against the big boss man. X-Pac is defiant as ever as our match gets underway but he gets caught out with a power bomb followed by a hard Irish whip to the corner. Kid tries to fight back but he gets put in a bear hug before getting slammed from turnbuckle to turnbuckle and this is not the way X-Pac wanted this one to start at all. Bossman then applies bear hug number 2, the absolute madman, but Puck fights out with a rake to the eyes before missing a standing bronco buster. To capitalise, Bossman runs in the axe Puck's weight and ass with a lot of speed, strength and general enthusiasm. Bossman shows he graduated from the bulldog school of chin fu with a devastating chin lock and when Walkman again tries to fire up he gets caught out one more time. The Bossman's backbreaker is a thing of beauty as he dumps x Pac on the mat with his arms open. And then, no joking by the way, the Bossman says DX can suck his ass, what a guy. Bossman then goes to the top, he dives off and he misses in spectacular fashion. And finally, x Pac builds some momentum with a spinning back kick and a spinning heel kick. Bossman finds himself in position. We see the Bronco Buster as the crowd goes nuts, but here comes the corporation's insurance policy test. Val Venus then shows up to attack Test. When Bossman gets involved, the referee calls for the bell. For those keeping score, that's three DQs and one non starter tonight on Raw. X Pog vaults over the top rope to attack Bossman while Venus and Tess continue fighting on the outside. It ends with officials breaking everyone up, and we need a hero to come out here and actually win a match tonight. That would be really, really nice. On Nitro, DDP says he feels like he's been to hell and back following Starcade. The giant may be the biggest and he may be the strongest, but it's all about how much heart you've got. DDP waited for the giant to make a mistake, and that patience paid off. Dallas then says a few of the Starcade matches have a black cloud hanging over them, one of which being Flair vs Bischoff, the other being the World Heavyweight title match. Dallas said Nash needs to do the right thing, and Dallas also says he expects to see Ric Flair beat Bischoff tonight on Nitro. DDP would love to work for Ric Flair, and as for Bischoff... You're gonna find a whole other way to feel the... Backstage, Conan tells Disco Inferno that Kevin Nash is mad at him. So mad, actually, that Kevin smacks Disco over the head with a rolled up paper. Yo, Kev, look at this guy, man. <laughs> I could watch that all day. Nash says he heard what DDP said. People think his win at Starcade was tainted, and Disco has to take some of that blame. Disco says he took a grenade for Kevin last night, and Kevin says if the Inferno wants to take grenades and prove himself to the NWO Wolfpack, all he needs to do is win his match tonight on Nitro. We'll find out soon who Disco's opponent is. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm training hard for the Royal Rumble, and I hope you are too. My son Shane made me drink disgusting raw eggs. He's made me sweat by balls off in the gym. He even made me watch a ton of previous Royal Rumble matches. And by God, I'm ready. I'm ready to throw your ass over the top rope and ensure you don't get anywhere near the WWF Championship. I hate you, Stone Cold. I really do. And trust me, when it comes to winning the Royal Rumble, you have no chance in hell. I'll see you on January 24th, you bald-headed bitch. Yours truly, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Up next we have tag team action. On Raw, it's Goldust and Steve Blackman vs Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. On Nitro, Kidman and Rey Mysterio team up to battle Eddie Guerrero and Juventud Guerrera. So Blackman and Goldust are fighting the two blue blazers, even though Owen and Jeff continue to deny it. Jeff Jarrett pulls off a smooth power slam at the beginning of the match, but Goldust answers with a clothesline. And already, Goldust is looking for shattered dreams. That didn't take long at all. Owen ensures his partner's nuts don't get kicked into next year, and Jarrett capitalizes with a single arm DDT. The King of Hearts tags in, he and Double J hit a back elbow, Owen then misses a dropkick, and Goldust tags out. It's Blackman time. Steve puts Owen down with a backbreaker, but he misses 
is the most electrifying move in sports entertainment today, the motherfucking elbow. Owen performs his spinning heel kick, he then puts Blackman down with a spine buster and he applies a sharpshooter. Michael Cole says here that Owen invented the sharpshooter by the way, but oh no, here comes Blackman Dojo graduate Dan the Beast Severn. The question is, is he coming for Owen or has he still got issues with his old sensei? Yeah, he wants Owen. Owen apologizes for what he did to Severn's neck, but the Beast doesn't want to hear it. So Double J uses Deborah to shield Owen, and this allows Blackman to roll Owen up in the ring for a pinfall victory. I knew Steve Blackman wouldn't let this match end in DQ, this man just saved Raw. So maybe Dan Severn and Steve Blackman are on good terms again, the dojo might reopen. On Nitro, these four cruiserweights stole the show at the pay per view last night and now they're in a tag team match on TNT. Rey Mysterio is still part of the LWO but it looks like Eddie also has problems with Juventud Guerrera. Remember, Eddie was upset that Juventud didn't get the job done in the Starcade opening match. Mysterio goes down after an Eddie Guerrero back suplex but Rey answers with a quick arm drag and a tilt toward backbreaker. Hoovy thinks he can do better than Eddie apparently, so Kidman comes in and he rocks Guerrero with a few clotheslines. Hoovy ducks under another clothesline and Kidman gets bulldogged. Guerrero then kisses the LWO leader on the cheek because that just solves all problems. But here comes Kidman with a back suplex and here comes Rey Mysterio with a bronco buster. Hoovy better sort himself out. Guerrero laughs at his NWO teammate, it's clear Hoovy wants wants to impress his leader but he's not doing a very good job of it. Still, the heels rush in for a surprise attack and while they do catch Kidman and Mysterio out for a moment, it all falls apart when Ray dropkicks Hoovy into Eddie. The audience loved this spot along with the tandem somersault planches that immediately followed. We come back from commercial break and Ray tries to pin Hoovy but he has no luck. Guerrero pulls off his snap powerbomb but Kidman saves the match for his team. And from here, Hoovy and Eddie work together to keep Mysterio away from his corner. Impressive double team moves keep Ray on the mat and just when you think Eddie and Hoovy are on the same page, they begin to make mistakes. Hoovy kicks Eddie by accident, Eddie headbutts Hoovy by accident, and that second little slip up allows Kidman to tag in and the cruiserweight champ cleans house. Mysterio and Kidman pull off an impressive double powerbomb and senton combo, but color me surprised, Kidman and Mysterio mess up and this leads to the babyfaces suffering a loss. Mysterio gets knocked out of the ring, Hoovy keeps Mysterio away with a somersault senton, and Eddie wins it by hitting Kidman with a frog splash. A good tag team match here on Nitro, much better than Raw's offering, and the LWO definitely needed a win after what happened at Starcade. Triple H vs Ken Shamrock's up next on Raw, on Nitro, new world champion Kevin Nash cuts a promo. Before the Raw match, we see Dennis Knight getting attacked by the Acolytes. This happened during a commercial break, but Farouk and Bradshaw put the former hog farmer into the trunk of his own car before driving off into the night. Whoever told Dennis to be here on Raw, well, it sounds like they gave him some bad advice. Back in the ring, Ken Shamrock and Triple H go at it and this time Shamrock's icy belt is up for grabs. We have DX and the corporation at ringside so you don't even need to guess how this one's gonna end. Shamrock takes advantage at the opening bell but he's forced to take a time out following an inverted atomic drop and a neckbreaker from the future king of kings. The fans chant Shamrock sucks, this just angers Kenny boy and he gets in the ring to hit Hunter with a clothesline. Michael Cole gives a PSA to the fans right here. If you want to bring signs to Raw, keep them clean. This was probably coming from the USA Network to be fair, but yeah, it sounds like WWF were clamping down on dirty signs. Hunter counters a suplex with a front suplex as the action continues on, he even takes out Test with a baseball slide, but this turns out to be a bad move as Shamrock capitalizes. The knee and leg become Shamrock's main target and Hunter struggles to stand up. Shamrock's thinking of the ankle lock no doubt as Hunter crumbles to the mat following an Irish whip. We have seen this spot a few times recently from Billy Gunn. Triple H manages to counter a second Irish whip and he whacks Shamrock from behind as the crowd try to will Hunter back into the match. Both men get up, Triple H goes on offense with a few strikes, we then see the Harley race knee and the face breaker knee smash and that's when the big boss man jumps on the apron. Hunter takes boss man out but the distraction allows Kenny boy to apply the ankle lock. After a long struggle Triple H makes it to the ropes but Shamrock won't let go. It's another DQ here on Raw folks, I thought it would have ended due to interference but a DQ is still a DQ. Shamrock shoves the referee and he applies the ankle lock again. BA Billy Gunn rushes in for the save and we've now got ourselves a faction brawl in the ring. The Stooges tell Kane to get in there and DX wisely get out before the big red machine can do any damage. 
Hunter doesn't look too good right now, it looks like he might be injured again. And backstage, Billy Gunn shows his displeasure at how the match went down. Shamrock approaches Billy, Billy says he should be the IC champ right now seeing as he got the 1-2-3 last week, and Shamrock responds by telling Mr Ass to kiss his ass before walking off. On Nitro, Big Nash walks to the ring with Lex Luger and Conan. The new champ doesn't look too thrilled at the moment and he goes on to explain that three things were important back when he broke into the business. Money, power and respect. He says last night at Starcade wasn't about money. He now has power as a world champion and he's gonna try to right the wrongs that happened at that event. So Disco Inferno's gonna face Bam Bam Bigelow. If Disco wins, he will become part of the Wolfpack. If he doesn't win, he has to stay away from the faction forever. In regards to Scott Hall, Big Kev loves his old buddy and Nash understands that Scott thought he was doing him a favour last night at Starcade, but Scott also said at Starcade that the only person he has to answer to is himself and Kevin thinks that the bad guy was dead wrong. Finally, there's respect. Kevin Nash respects Bill Goldberg and to prove that and to show that Nash can indeed beat Goldberg one on one, Big Sexy's given Goldberg a title match inside the Georgia Dome. Nash knows he can kick Goldberg's ass and he wants to prove it next week on Nitro. The world belt still has Goldberg's nameplate but if Goldberg can't win next week, it's gonna say Nash. For those of you who know what goes down next week, well, strap yourselves in, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Mark Henry cuts a promo next on Raw's War. On Nitro, it's Disco Inferno vs Bam Bam Bigelow. On Heat last night, the Pretty Mean Sisters said they have had it with men, so Big Mark wants to apologise to his girlfriend China. Mark says he was wrong to get it on with Terry and Jackie. He gets on his knees and he says he just wants China to come back, but here comes PMS and Terry and Jackie want to have a word with Mark. Terry says she and Jackie had fun with Mark last week but the sisters aren't through yet with sexual chocolate and Dilo tells these two glorified ring rats to keep their distance, his words not mine. Dilo's about to knock seven shades of shit out of Terry and Jackie but the DX theme song plays and here comes China, looks like Mark is in some serious trouble. Surprisingly, China goes after Jackie and Terry, she says stay away from my man which delights Mark no end. And when China pushes Jackie to the mat, Mark jumps for joy. That's one happy fella right there. China then tells Mark she'll see him later before leaving the ring, and it looks like all of Mark's Christmases came at once. Backstage, the corporation are looking for someone, we don't know who, but we naturally assume it's a member of DX. After a commercial break, the boys find who they're looking for, and it's actually the Godfather. Billy Gunn's scheduled to take on the Godfather next, so it looks like that match is up in the air. So it's Disco Inferno's biggest challenge to date, if he beats Bam Bam he's officially in the NWO Wolfpack. Bam Bam tosses Disco from one side of the ring to another, twice, and when Disco tries to fight back with a punch to the midsection, Bam Bam just shakes it off before sending Disco into the corner for a running splash. This isn't going well for the Inferno at all. Bigelow goes up for the diving headbutt but Disco moves out of the way. This might be his only chance. Disco tries a few clotheslines but Bigelow won't go down, so he instead delivers a swinging neckbreaker before going to the second rope. Disco lands an elbow drop but Bigelow kicks out at two. Disco surprises everyone with a chart buster and this should be all over, but again Bigelow kicks out and it would seem all hope is now lost. Disco goes down after a clothesline, he gets some greetings from Asbury Park and Bam Bam Bigelow defeats Disco Inferno via pinfall. Disco's failed to become an official member of the NWO Wolfpack. Backstage, Eric Bischoff warms up for his match tonight against Ric Flair, and WCW then shows some footage recorded by Dr. Uh, Dr. Charles Brock, it's Ric Flair's doctor. This J Brone talks about Flair's health issues last week. The Nature Boy was brought into hospital, he was put on an IV, and he was placed on a cardiac monitor. After some tests were done, Dr. Brock says Rick didn't actually suffer a heart attack, but his blood results showed poisoning by Digitalis. Ric Flair was. R Rick was poisoned? Even Mike Tanay can't believe where this one's going. Someone poisoned Ric Flair, and I'd be willing to bet it was Eric Bischoff. Mean Gene confronts Eric about this and Eric's definitely on edge, but Eric says he had nothing to do with it and Eric says he did nothing wrong. Yeah, okay easy, you no good poisoning dirty bastard.
Scotty Steiner takes on Conan next on Nitro. On Raw, Billy Gunn's scheduled to take on The Godfather. Billy says the next time he sees Shamrock, he's going to kick his ass. Jerry Lawler rightfully says Billy bumped into Shamrock earlier and BA did absolutely nothing. Shane McMahon appears and he says there's going to be a change in the program. The Godfather can't compete tonight, so Billy Gunn's got himself a match against Corporate Kane. Kane seems reluctant, he's being ordered around by Patterson and Briscoe, but the corporation's Christmas bonus gets in the ring and Billy tries his best to take the early lead, but it's useless. Kane needs to destroy everyone and everything to stay out of the mental asylum. So Gunn gets rocked with right hands, followed by a big clothesline. After more punishment in the corner, Billy Gunn takes a big boot in the middle of the ring. The Stooges scream orders at Kane as the big red machine drips badass over the top rope, and Kane jumps from the top turnbuckle with a forearm smash. Billy finally fights back with a Famouser before sending Kane over the top rope. On the outside, Kane stuns Billy before leaving him beside the apron, and then Kenny Boy Shamrock shows up to put Billy in the ankle lock. The referee doesn't see any of this as Jerry Briscoe tells Shamrock to let go so Kane can finish Gunn off inside the ring. Kane then chokeslams Billy and he goes for the pinfall victory but the Stooges aren't satisfied and they order Corporate Kane to chokeslam Billy one more time. They end up asking for a third choke slam, but DX hit the ring to save their buddy, so it's another DQ on Raw. Five DQs and one non-starter. Everyone gives WCW a hard time over DQ finishes, including myself, so it's only fair to point out when Raw does the exact same thing. I don't think WCW was ever this bad though on just one show. By the way, Triple H is magically healed up following that ankle lock earlier, though it looks like Billy Gunn's in a bad way. Last night at Starcade, Steiner confronted Conan backstage and so tonight the two are going to go at it inside the ropes. Conan's TV title is up for grabs and it starts with Conan hitting Slick Johnson with a K factor. Scott Dickinson agrees to be the referee so the match is still on. Conan saves Scott Dickinson from a beatdown and Buff gets sent out of the ring. The rolling lariat puts Steiner on the mat and Scott gets nursed on the outside following another lariat. Buff helps Scott out from the apron and the TV champ takes a double underhook powerbomb. Scott's now filled with confidence as he dumps K-Dog out of the ring and the champ gets tossed into the guardrail. Once again, Buff Bagwell attacks Conan and Scott Dickinson lets it all slide. Back inside the ring, Conan takes a stiff clothesline and Buff Bagwell's enjoying this one immensely. He enjoys it so much that he gets involved again before calling Conan a loser. Steiner rips the Wolfpack shirt off Conan's back before dropping an elbow, K-Dog gets hung up in the tree of woe and again Buff Bagwell lends Scott a hand. This has turned into basically a two on one match. Scott follows up a belly to belly suplex with some push ups, he says this is too easy. But he really shouldn't have opened his mouth, seeing as Conan's able to counter a power slam attempt with a reverse DDT. K-Dog gets another break when Steiner tries a corner charge and there's the K-Factor face buster. Conan locks in the sunrise, Buff tries to pull Steiner out of the ring. Lex Luger shows up and he tries to pull Buff away from the apron but this causes the submission hold to get broken up. Conan doesn't seem too happy with Lex, and things go from bad to worse when he tumbles out of the ring thanks to Lex punching Buff on the apron. Steiner brings Conan back in while Lex chases Buff around the ring. Scott applies the Steiner recliner and we have a new TV champion tonight on Nitro. Scott Steiner defeats Conan via submission. Did Lex just help the black and white or was it an innocent clumsy mistake by the total package? Either way, it's good seeing Scott win a singles championship on Nitro but I'm not sure if the TV title really suits him. Big Papa Pump's been on fire recently and I wouldn't have minded seeing Scott challenge for the world title to be honest. Road Dog vs Mankind's the final match to take place on Raw tonight. On Nitro we've got Scott Hall vs Brian Adams. The Rock joins the commentary team on Raw and he says he's got a special place for Mankind in the Smackdown Hotel. The hotel's located on the corner of Know Your Old Boulevard at the end of Jabroni Drive. <laughs> it's brilliant. Before commercial break we see Shawn Michaels arriving to the arena and when we come back the match is already underway. Road Dog takes a headbutt before both men go tumbling to the outside and Mick stays in control as the two men fight on the rampway. Road Dog gets suplexed on the stage before Mick heads backstage. He comes back with a table and Mick drops the table right on top of the hardcore champion. Road Dog replies with a backdrop and Mick lands hard on the steel. The two go back down to ringside where Road Dog uses his trusty baking tray once again to cave mankind skull in. And back in the ring, James uses a steel chair to do even more damage. It's gonna take more than that to keep Mick Foley down though. 
Mankind comes back with a big pile driver. His second pile driver lands on that steel chair. Mick then drops a leg over the hardcore champ, but Road Dog stays in it. The two head back to the outside and into the audience. There's a conveniently placed table in the crowd tonight, and you just know someone's going to get put through it. Mick tries to use a monitor first of all, but it's no use. And Road Dog replies by punching Mick into a crew member. Mick gets choked with some cord, but he manages to snap Road Dog's neck on a handrail. Road Dog then takes the mandible claw as he gets set up. Up on the table, and Mick begins to climb up to the next tier as Rock leaves the commentary desk. Mick dives off, he hits an elbow drop, but then the Rock interferes and Mankind takes a rock bottom. That one looked pretty rough. Road Dog drapes an arm over Mick, he retains the hardcore title, but after he realizes what happened, he says he didn't want to win the match this way. Another fun hardcore match on Raw. Fans responded well to these matches, so it made sense for the WWF to feature more on TV. On Nitro, Scott Hall says he listened to Nash's promo earlier on, and Scott says Big Kev's right. Three things are important, and those three things are money, money, money. He's just like Mr. Krabs. Scott handed Nash the world belt, and Kevin didn't even invite him to the victory party, and Scott says that ingrate Kevin isn't the same person the bad guy used to know. Bran Adams forgets to remove his glasses and hat at the beginning of the match. He quickly remembers to do so after flooring Scott with a right hand. Scott takes a backbreaker, and the former biker Michael Liker puts the bad guy down with a hard chop. So Scott gets up, and we see some of those signature right hands. Brian, however, replies with his shit pile driver. Paul gets choked at the ropes, and even Vincent's having fun at Scott's expense. Adams locks in a bear hug that excites the crowd no end, and even a spine buster from Adams fails to elicit any kind of crowd response. You know what to do when the crowd doesn't make any noise? You lock in a nerve pinch. That's right, it's such a dangerous move. The fans finally get into it a bit when Hall floors Adams and he signals for the outsider's edge, but Bran counters with a backdrop and Hall ends up taking a press slam. Bran celebrates on the middle rope, Hall wakes up, the bad guy delivers the outsider's edge, and Scott wins via pinfall. A poor match right here. I've got nothing else to say, really. Raw ends with the public firing of Shawn Michaels. On Nitro, it's Ric Flair vs Eric Bischoff. Vince McMahon makes his entrance, and he calls HBK out to the ring. Commissioner Michaels gets inside the ropes, and Vince says when Shawn made his WWF debut all those years ago, he asked Vince for an opportunity. Shawn became a star thanks to both his in-ring abilities and the money Vince spent on marketing the Heartbreak Kid, but Shawn winning the WWF Championship was the beginning of the end. Vince plays some footage on the Titantron. It's from an episode of Raw back in March where Shawn Michaels called Vince a piece of shit. This line was cut out of the original broadcast, by the way. Shawn also made a small thread here about potentially not showing up for WrestleMania, and this too was also cut from the original broadcast. So yeah, Vince has Shawn by the balls here. We also see Sean holding the corporation back last week, so McMahon has no choice. Vince says Sean's one of the greatest superstars of all time, but he sucks as a commissioner. He then says Vince McMahon doesn't lay down for anybody, and Vince then fires Sean Michaels on the spot. We think HBK is going to take it well, but he lays Vince out with sweet chin music and the fans lose their minds. HBK is just about to teabag his boss, but he's forced to get out of the ring and escape through the audience when the corporation show up. So once again, Shawn Michaels has left the building. The superkick was great, and it got a fantastic reaction from the audience. Anyone who attacks McMahon nowadays is immediately loved by fans across the world. HBK's time as commissioner was very brief and it's a shame it didn't last longer, but Michael still needed to clean his act up and, for this reason, he's going to get written off TV again next week. On Nitro, Eric Bischoff tries to weasel his way out of this main event match. Instead of making his entrance, he makes a beeline for his limousine, but surprise surprise, the horsemen are waiting inside. After a commercial break, Bischoff gets brought down to the ring to meet his maker, and that confidence he had earlier on is all but gone. A few stomps from the nature boy gets followed up with a low blow, Rick then uses Eric as a punching bag in the corner, and there's another low blow ladies and gents. After last night, I'm surprised Bischoff's balls aren't already broken into tiny little pieces. Flair then tries to rip Bischoff's jaw off, and when Charles Robinson tries to intervene, Rick throws him away, but the match is going to continue. A few knife edge chops put Eric on the mat, and just as Flair's about to punch Eric's head off his shoulders, the black and white appear. Thankfully, the horsemen have stuck around and they're able to keep the NWO at bay, but the giant shows up and he's able to just march right through the chaos. Man, this crowd, by the way, is absolutely electric for this. 
Jan gets in the ring, he headbutts Flair, he signals for the choke slam, but oh my god, Macho Man Randy Savage is back. He's bringing a new female valet to the ring and he's wearing a black and white NWO shirt. Macho gets in the ring, he taps Jan on the shoulder and the two seem cool with one another, but as soon as Jan turns his back to choke slam Flair, Savage hits a low blow on the big man and Jan gets sent over the top rope. Rick then hits a vertical suplex on Bischoff, the nature boy applies the figure 4 and Bischoff gives it up. Ric Flair is the new president of WCW for 90 days and Slick Rick finally got payback. WCW superstars and announcers join Rick in the ring for a celebration and the show ends with Bischoff getting put in another figure 4. A real feel good moment to end Nitro, it seems that WCW have reclaimed control for a while and Bischoff's abuse of power has come to an end. You may wonder why they just didn't do this at Starcade, but keep in mind that the Monday Night ratings and competing with WWF was way more important to WCW during this time period. Nitro wins Reliving the War this week, easily. Flair's promo, the Cruiserweight title match, Norman Smiley vs Chavo and the closing of the show sealed it for me. Raw had way too many disqualifications and the matches they presented weren't all that good even if you take the DQs out of the equation. Nitro's now on 67 points, Raw's on 81 and we've got 18 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw won with a 4.9, Nitro scored a 4.6. You want a war? You're gonna get one. Congratulations guys, you made it through 1998. It was a very interesting year with some moments and matches that would shape the future of pro wrestling as a whole. We still have a long way to go before the end of the Monday Night War but we're now entering 1999 and it's going to get very interesting from the word go. Both Raw and Nitro put on pivotal shows next week that are still talked about to this very day. So don't miss the next episode of Reliving the War and don't miss the beginning of 1999. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for being invested enough in this series that I'm able to begin another year of the Monday Night War. Take care everyone.